printing money is bad, mm-hmm. right? It's inflationary. Mm-hmm. Uh, but borrowing printed money is insane. <laughs> December 7th, 2016, 75 years, uh, Pearl Harbor. We're going to touch on that uh, on the... Uh, on that event, uh, um, the day of infamy. Um, I read in uh, Richard Mayberry's book, The World War II, the rest Mm -hmm. of the story, that he claims that, let's see if I get this right, that um, Hitler was essentially dead in the water in the middle of Russia where they had no oil. You know, and they're, they're that's where tanks, he was going. <laughs> yeah, the tanks were frozen, and they, yeah. he was just he was just burnt out. Yeah. So there was really at that point no reason for the United States to get into war. Correct. So, what would be your opinion of why uh, Roosevelt was so anxious to get in there and and could possibly have been involved in this whatever this Pearl Harbor thing was to get the American people po'd enough to uh, go to war in Europe? Yeah, that's, I think, uh, the, the British influence, right? The Anglophile in him. Oh, with the whole connection with, with, sure. with uh, Churchill and all that yeah, yeah. was going on. Yeah, I think... Because he was trying to say, come on over, boys. Yeah, and come need, and help. Because come and help. Because we're... Yeah. You think that the Germans were in trouble. Poof. The Brits were in trouble. Yeah, uh, they're right there in the middle of it. Yeah. yeah. Financially, mm-hmm. economically, you know, their financial outlook looked bleak. Can you imagine losing... The British Empire. I mean, the thought. The thought. The, just the thought. The thought of it. So, um, and of course, the the bully nature of uh, of Roosevelt. You know, he uh, he certainly saw himself as the the savior of the uh, world. Do, do we have any idea, Andrew Goss, if the, the tentacles that the banking people had in the government um, seventy five years ago? Oh goodness, yeah. I mean, they were there. Right? Harry Dexter White, yeah. Yeah. Who's Harry? Who's the guy? Remember, we, we've discussed the IMF, and mm-hmm. you know, if you look at what happened at the end of the war, you could maybe question why the beginning of the war, right? Because at the end of the war, um, with the treaties that were signed, Bretton Woods and Dart, Dartmouth Oaks. Oh, the whole the whole Dart, oil Dart, Dart Oaks oil and thing, and yes, yes, Saudi and how Arabian, we, yes, how and that how, you know how we're going to back the dollar, make the dollar the preeminent currency in the world, and so on them, and so yeah. forth, right? That was a good day for the dollar. Yeah, it was a great day for the dollar. <laughs> and it was, many would argue, and I know I have made this suggestion, the final conquest, right? Once the dollar became the standard of payment throughout the world, you win. then the people that issue dollars are the winners of the game, aren't they? And the people that issue dollars would be what the we call Federal the Federal Reserve Banks. Federal right. Reserve Banks and ECB and, yeah. and the IMF and the BIS. Yeah. And, world, and it's all the same people. Well, how many times have we seen all my favorite people. brand of whatever, my brand of ho-hos, whatever? Really? You still eating those ho-hos? I'm just saying. I know. <laughs> well, you say your brand. Like, imagine Hostess when they stopped course. production. Yeah. Uh, before they did. Well, you take your favorite brand of anything and you watch it reduce itself in quality until it's trading entirely upon its reputation. Have you seen that before? Of course. Okay. I mean, that's the reason I stopped eating Twinkies. Oh, okay. It starts out as a wholesome, full product, you know, great value. <laughs> McDonald's just is a perfect example. what it's example. supposed to perfect be. Perfect example. And then they start adulterating it and yep. making it. And pretty soon, it's total garbage and it's trading it. on yeah. its reputation. Just on its rep. Let's right. go back and talk about the dollar now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. The same thing. Yes. Isn't it? Curious. So the very same brand was that was put forth post World War II, and then understanding that the brand is put forth as the world's brand, um, maybe we can understand why we decided to decimate the rest of the world five years earlier. Whatever, whatever conclusion you may draw about why we engaged in World War II, whether Roosevelt knew, none of that matters. We at the end of the game. The dollar is the preeminent currency in the world. That's the pudding that we're looking at, the proof. That's what I think. Okay. So I always look back at, you know, who benefited from this thing. Yeah. And then consider Roosevelt's words, which were, if it happens, you bet it was planned to happen that way. There are no accidents, right? That's a paraphrase, but look it up if you Google that. Those are Roosevelt's words. That in, yeah, in politics, nothing happens by accident. If mm-hmm. it happens, you can bet it was planned that way. So knowing that he understands that, we get to 1945 as the preeminent currency in the world, then we 
slowly devalue the brand and the people that bought out the company, if you will, are the ones that benefited from the riches of devaluing the brand. Now we're left with a dollar that is the shell of the one that was sold to the world in 1945 and all the profit that's resulted from it. Well, it's made a world of oligarchs who effectively still control the game to a greater extent. I think there's still hope for mankind. But uh, they're still in control. Yeah, they're still in control. This is pretty interesting. Kelly wrote in one of the things she sent, or he sent. I don't know. Kelly's a boy or a girl. Uh, anyway, um, that doesn't on, matter. On it doesn't matter. Yeah, because we are transgender bathrooms around here. Yeah, yeah. Roosevelt said, according to this person, this person who has done some pretty good research, Navy Day speech, October twenty seventh, nineteen forty one. Remember? That's right. So yeah. that was two months ago, right? Yeah. Uh, three months ago. Roosevelt said he had a secret map made in Germany by yeah. Hitler's government yeah. by the planners of the New World Order. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. The president con- continued saying, that map, my friends, makes clear the Nazi design not only against South America but against the United States as well. That's right. The problem here is the simple fact that the map was part of a British disinformation operation, mm. writes Kelly, <laughs> right. and that this is likely... And, and that it's likely the FDR knew it. That's oh, right. that's another exactly. Colin Paul at the uh, Yeah, at the, the weapons UN. of mass destruction. Yeah, the weapons right. of mass destruction. Yeah. Oh, so this was a, a made-up document. But that he that foisted he knew. on the American people oh. as, as though, look, they're coming to get us next. Now, to be she's fair. She's got this all footnoted, too, by the oh, way. Yeah. Right? No, so, you know, Kelly's, of, Kelly's work is excellent, yeah. I will say. Yeah. It's excellent. Go ahead. I interrupted. Sorry. Well, you know, the idea that Hitler really pulled the strings here should be understood and that their plan was very similar to the uh, American dollar plan. I mean, it's not like they didn't have their bankers. <laughs> they didn't have their uh, boys who would have loved to see Mark Inc. instead of uh, Dollar Inc. Uh-huh. So. Well, and then I think you can also liken the stuff uh, that goes on with the corpse the big corpse, uh, the apples of the world, whatever, sure. the Gates thing with mm-hmm. Ford and all mm-hmm. these people back then. Ted Turner. Where they were, you know, well, yeah, where they were, he was, wasn't Ford, uh, we established, was uh, building uh, um, Richard, this Connolly fellow out of Europe was saying he's, he had uh, evidence that Ford was actually building the, the um, tanks for Hitler. Yeah. No. Well, mm-hmm. they were Fords. The Dearborn, yeah, they, they were, were Fords. Fords. <laughs> Jeez. What's up? With, uh, Donald would have. Man, yeah. he would have been screaming. He would have well, been pulling every, his hair out. Every gallon of ethyl lead, <laughs> uh, right? The ethyl, the lead component yeah. was a patent issued to in Britain to the queen, to the royal family. So every gallon of gas burned by the Luftwaffe resulted in a royalty for the British royal family. Luftwaffe, yeah. yeah. Boy, all wars are banker wars. That's right. Saying, and, right. And the Bank of International Settlements, of course... Uh, you know, continuing to conduct affairs throughout all of it. Mm-hmm. Like there, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. you're on one side of the table and we're on the other side of the table and in banking we're all Swiss. So we don't care uh, who's what. Mm-hmm. We keep our money value and our our secret that, you know, we issue money. We keep that all behind, under the table and in, behind the closed doors of the BIS in Switzerland so that on the outside, we can maintain whatever facade you want to maintain, because once we strip away the magic of banking, as uh, Archibald Roberts put it, the most secret science, boy, if that thing is shaken, then then the whole world is in trouble. So they, they keep that money sacrosanct. 